Um, for those of you who don't know me, my background is um, about 34 years in the industry now. Started out as a regular database administrator many years ago. And in my mid-20s, I co-founded a company called Cod and Date with two gentlemen, Dr. Ted Cod and Chris Date. If you know your history, you'll know Dr. Cod was the inventor of something called the relational model. So I worked uh, all relational databases, of course, built on top of that model, and I worked there for about four years before joining a, a startup at the end of the 80s uh, in Los Angeles called Teradata, and I became a chief architect there working on massively parallel optimizers for the data warehousing market. And I guess about 22 years ago now, I guess 93, when the data warehousing market was lifting, I came out and started a industry analyst firm um, focusing on BI analytics, data management, and of course, more recently, big data. So that's a little bit about me. If you want to tweet, feel free to do so. Um, but I want to talk to you about um, uh, analytics in a business context. Um, I want to talk to you about business survival. Because the power of the customer is becoming scary today to the point where really they are becoming pretty well all-powerful. And I want to talk to you about that and, and why it is that executives are looking for uh, mass execution of their business strategy in order to stay in touch with customer demands and keep their business running smoothly. So I'm going to open up and talk about the intelligent enterprise and what the key requirements are to building one of those. And then how do you apply you know, analytics in that kind of context and, and, and use an analytical platform to try and speed up the delivery of insights within an organization and across an organization, and then accelerate op out the consumption of those analytics to be deployed uh, across the organization to make uh, a real significant leap forward in terms of effectiveness across the organization. <clears throat> So let's start out by, by talking about business survival. Today, if you walk out on any street corner, everybody's looking down at a mobile device. No matter where you go, they're looking at their mobile devices. And they're surfing, they're searching, uh, looking for bargains, looking at other people's opinions. And so what a lot of companies are realizing is that customers today are pretty informed before they buy. They can find new competitors out there on the, on the internet. They're visible all of a sudden. It gives them more choice. It's easy to find. It's very easy to compare. They can get ratings from various sites, whether it's social networks or review websites. And they can do it all on the move. And in a pretty short time frame. And so the net result is that because of their behavior online and the speed at which they can get information, customer loyalty is becoming very cheap. Now, you might say this is purely for business to consumer, but the prediction is that the business to business online retail market will be twice the size of the business to consumer market by 2020. So people like procurement managers are doing the same thing, which means that if we don't understand online behavior, we're really in trouble. So things like search data, like clickstream, like sentiment are becoming seriously important in truly understanding what's going on uh, with a customer. Um, I don't know the last time I went into my local branch of my bank, maybe four years ago, something like that. I do everything online. Now, if that's typical of most people these days, how does a bank engage with its customers? There's only going to be one place they can do that, and that's online. And so they've got to get smart about what people are doing online. And it's not the average data warehouse that holds clickstream data or sentiment data. That data is not in there, typically. And what's really scaring a lot of organizations is the sheer speed at which customers can get informed these days. I mean, this is just a handful of some uh, comparison websites, uh, and certainly not reflective 
across all of the countries in Europe. Some of these are more UK oriented. Some of them, like Google Flights, are, are, are pretty global comparison sites. But the point is that these things are having a massive influence on behavior of a consumer and, and a business customer. So much so that you know, a, a lot of uh, one of the retailers I was talking to recently is really plowing huge amounts of uh, money into truly understanding what's going on online because they're finding that just by comparing products, customer behavior is sort of like splitting their shopping basket and doing some shopping here, some shopping there based upon uh, their ability to compare prices and, and product features and whatnot so quickly. And with that kind of power and them being so well informed, people are saying, well, we better make sure everything else is okay to keep the customer. Quality of our products and our services, uh, you know, making sure customer services is on the money. There's no bottlenecks in our business processes that are causing unsatisfied customers or errors in the, in, in, in the creation or delivery of our products. Uh, nothing late so that we can continually keep the business optimized in order to keep the customers on board to retain them as well as grow new customers. Retaining customers is now just as important as getting new ones. But the one thing that's clear today is that if you don't do these kinds of things, then sentiment will be your judge. And for many organizations, at least my client base, they're trying to get consistent across all channels that the customer may interact with the organization. And as a result of that, it means they have to have consistent customer insights across all of those channels. It's not much point just doing it online if it's totally different behavior um, in a branch or in a store um, or in a contact center. We want consistency, the whole omni-channel initiative, which requires access to common uh, transaction services, but it also requires access to insights that are available to deliver a personalized uh, service to every individual customer and personalized recommendations, and both of those require analytics. But it's not just the customer. We're now starting to see serious brand damage being caused by risk. Things like cybercrime happening uh, on, on a weekly basis. Uh, things like uh, fraud uh, and, and penalizing uh, organizations for not doing a good enough job about fraud and compliance. Or things like equipment failure, which can cause massive brand damage to the tune of $30 billion in the case, I think, of, of one oil company um, as a result of, of what's happened there. So when you look at it, you know, it's not just risk, it's costs, it's finance, and the complexity of managing that and, uh, and making sure that you know, we don't sort of overspend uh, unplanned operational costs, don't skyrocket and, 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 and destroy uh, planning. Planning's far more dynamic rather than once a year going around managers and saying, what do you think about next year? And they're just kind of guessing about what numbers they might do the following year. We want far more accuracy, we want it far more dynamic uh, in order to be able to um, get what we need out of it. So given this kind of climate with customer power uh, to the point where they'll switch loyalty at the touch of a mobile phone or the click of a mouse, there's never an, an adding into it risk and compliance and and financial requirements and, and whatnot. There's never been a point where executives have wanted the people within their own company en masse to deliver on, on the same business strategy. It's not a case they just want decisions up here. It's they want everybody to tow on the same ropes in order to remain competitive in the marketplace going forward. And so it makes you ask, well, if I picked out any of those objectives of your business strategy, the strategic priorities, then who contributes to those within your organization? Do you know? I mean, do executives do it? Is it managers? Is it frontline operations staff? Is it applications? Is it a combination? 
I mean, are they towing on the same rope or are they all pulling in different directions? Because right now, I think what, what the executives are saying is we need everybody to work smarter, but we need to do it on common goals. And you might say, well, how are you going to do that? And the answer is to deliver insights across the organization that will cause coordinated decision-making to drive the organization forward. So if I take my, my boat here called customer, you know, it, it, you know, what we want is an intelligent enterprise. We, we want to know, are the right people in the right boats? We want to know, you know, is, you know, who should be in there? Maybe it's an executive. Maybe it's some frontline workers across the organization. They don't have to report to the executive. We just need the right people in the boat. We might have a line manager. It might be an application making decisions on its own, automatically. It might even be partners, but we need the right people in the right boats. Which brings me to an intelligent enterprise. And if you, you know, look at this definition, it's a bit long, but the point is it's about where people and systems throughout the organization have access to insights and analytics where they continuously know the best action to take so that it can dynamically um, allow the business to run optimally, to grow, to remain compliant, to maximize profitability and minimize risk. You know, if you run upstairs, uh, your heart beats faster and you sweat a little. Nothing tells your body to do that. It just does it. And the same should happen for business. It should be able to move with what's going on around it, which means that analytics and data have to come to the middle of the enterprise and get wired into everything. And what does that mean? It's not about a traditional enterprise where analytics are just being used by business analysts and managers. It's where analytics are being used by everybody, whether it's people in the front office, operations, partners, suppliers, customers, as well as your traditional business analysts and your executives. It's about not just historical data, it's about real-time and historical data. It's not just about humans doing the analysis, it's about humans and automated analysis. It's not just about humans making decisions. It's about humans and automated decision making. It's not, you know, it, it's not just about role-based dashboards where everything's static. It's about role-based dashboards that are dynamic, that are constantly on the pulse of what's going on across the business. And it's not just about BI tools. It's about on-demand analytical services, on-demand decision services. Don't give me the insight, tell me what to do. You know, if I'm in a job that I can't use a tool, I just want to know what to do. And so it's getting it out to the masses. And so how do you go about doing that? Well, for me, you've got to put analytics and data at the very heart of the enterprise. You've got to align the projects with your strategic business priorities. You've got to introduce a common platform across what, what I would call a logical data warehouse. Today, it's no longer about a single data store in an enterprise data warehouse. We're into big data. We're into streaming data. Uh, we need all of that. We're into NoSQL databases. We want to be able to sort of stretch across it. But we've got to let people know what already exists. And so we need a catalog to say, hey, this exists. Don't reinvent it. The number of times I see people reinventing it when the, when the data or the analytics are already available is very frustrating. But with data becoming so big, we need to push the analytics down to where the data is rather than taking the data to where the analytics are. And so we need in-stream analytics, in-database analytics, in-Hadoop analytics in order to be able to, to do that and to, to get scalability and to facilitate reuse. And we've got to integrate this with everything. So on the alignment side, which is very important, there's lots of analytical projects we could do, but we better tie into the business strategy in order to get C-level sponsorship, in order to deliver on the priorities, whether it's customer related or op uh, operations or risk or finance. We've got to organize um, ourselves in order to deliver on that. So it could be, you know, 
what are the analytics that are in, you know, being, being used at different levels of the enterprise to help people make decisions around customer or around risk or around financial planning and re reduce, on cost reduction or around operations. All of those have got to be organized in order to deliver on this. So if I take an analogy like Google Maps, like what are the tourist attractions in London? So you get a, a map up and a number of attractions, and if you click on one of them, it tells you where it is. But what happens if this map was your business? And what happens if this list of attractions was your strategic business objectives? You know, I want to know what analytics are in play to help achieve the objectives that are in your business strategy. And where are they deployed and who's using them? So if a C-level executive comes to me and says, what are we doing to improve customer engagement? I need to know what are the analytics that are in play and where are they deployed and who's using them across the business. It's not about this is what marketing is doing and, 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 and these are marketing analytics. And this is what finance is doing. This is what finance uh, analytics are about, which is very departmental siloed. This is saying, how is it we're using analytics to engage customers? I don't care where those analytics are deployed. Similarly, what are we doing about risk? And where are those deployed? What are we doing about operations? And where are those deployed? Because some of those could be real-time analytics. Some of them could be big data analytics. Some of them could be based on traditional data stores. But it's the group of them together that's being mobilized in order to integrate and deliver on, uh, d d deliver on a common goal. And within our business processes, whether it's order to cash, procure to pay, plan to manufacture, claims process, underwriting process, whatever it is, what are the analytics that are deployed within the process to help people do the tasks more effectively in order to improve that customer service? keep that customer satisfaction high or whatever it happens or, or to reduce fraud or whatever it is. So we want to know, you know, do we have analytics embedded in processes? Well, what tasks exactly are there within this process that rely on them? Are those tasks performed by people or could they be performed by applications? In which case, how does the application leverage the analytics? We need to answer these questions in order to help achieve our business goals. Because when I look around and I go to a lot of my customers around, around Europe and in other parts of the world, I come away sometimes thinking there's an awful lot of siloed stuff going on, very departmental-based analytics teams doing a great job in that department, but they're still working in silos. And there's not a, a great lot of coordination in saying, actually, you guys in this department, this one and this one, all working on analytics, are tied into this one objective so that you all know um, what you're trying to achieve as a group. There's often a fractured approach to model development. And so there's maybe multiple technologies being used in different departments and a lot of reinvention rather than reuse going on. And of course, you know, data and accuracy of data makes a, a big difference. And we want to make sure we're reusing solid data. You know, false positives don't work too well. You know, signing Lionel Messi to, work, to play for Man United isn't exactly an a accurate prediction, you know, but I mean, um, certainly there's no question about it that if we can integrate this and reuse things and speed things up, it's going to be, you know, a, a lot more effective. And also there's new data sources, complex data sources, text, um, semi-structured data like JSON. So how do you improve a situation? Well, you've got to know key questions in order to empower people and make them effective. If we're going to get mass deployment of analytics across the organization, if we're going to make them effective to work on common objectives, we've got to know what their roles are. We've got to know what tasks they perform. We've got to know 
whether they use applications or can they use tools. You know, if I'm sitting in a contact center, I haven't got time to log off of what I'm doing on some core CRM application and go off into some other tooling. I'm stuck to that application. I've got to use it. During what tasks do they need it, these, the, the, these analytics? And precisely what insights are going to make them more effective? And what format do they need them in? And have they got time to use a front-end tool, or are they nailed into an application? And when they do get these insights, what kind of actions do they need to, need to take? Or could we even go further and give them prescriptive analytics and recommend the actions that they need to take? But if we're going to not only do that, do our research about how does the business need to use analytics in order to deliver on strategic priorities, we've then got to say, well, how, how physically are you going to do that from a technical perspective? And you've got to put an anchor in place, a stake in the ground. You've got to say, OK, we want a common analytics platform. We want the ability to look across multiple analytical data stores whether it's traditional warehouses or data marts, whether it's um, Hadoop, whether it's streaming data, or even you know, smaller data sets that could be potentially valuable, whether they're inside the enterprise, whether they're on the cloud, um, you know, whether they're coming from social networks and whatnot. But it's not just about development. We've got to then figure out, well, where do you integrate these to get the mass effectiveness that we're looking for? Do we need some way to integrate these into business processes and applications, into front-end tools so we can visualize it much easier or build stories around it? You know, there's plenty of BI tools out there, so plug into it and, and let people use them and plug into our scorecards and our planning in order to help people be more effective, more accurate there too. But we want to handle everything from big data analytics all the way to real time, you know, really on the pulse of what's happening right now on an event-driven basis, which means there's lots of different analytical projects that need to get built. And it's a combination of those analytical projects that are going to drive up effectiveness. And I think another thing we've got to do is accelerate the, de the, the development and accelerate the consumption or the deployment of these uh, uh, analytics within, within the organization. So how would you go about that? Well, you know, if I look at a pipeline, you know, there's a series of steps to that. You know, you acquire data, you prepare data, which is obviously extraordinarily important. Then you integrate data from multiple sources. Then you can analyze it. Then you can do other things, like either visualize it, embed it, or even feed it into a, a rules engine and cause automatic uh, actions uh, as we step into the world of uh, prescriptive analytics. But my question is, should we reinvent that whole pipeline every time? Could we not speed it up? Could we not organize ourselves for success so we kind of maybe break it apart? into reusable data that's already been prepared and trusted, into reusable actions, and able to assemble these much more rapidly, and, and if you like, you know, turn it into more like a Henry Ford production line, whether you're building streaming analytical, uh, uh, analytical models, whether you're building analytics for big data, whether you're building it for you know, traditional environments or whatever. But could you organize yourselves around the technology to produce and start reusing components? And then get into this publish and subscribe model so whatever you build, you publish. So that other people can find out about what you built and subscribe to it. And then you know, give them a leg up. So you know, if I prepare some data, I need some way to publish that, like into an information catalog, so that people don't go around thinking this data is not available when it maybe already is. You don't want them to reinvent if it's already built. We need an information catalog to say, trust, here's some trusted data available as a service. Then other people could pick that up and say, well, integrate that, th these data sources and publish that. And now I get trusted integrated data as a service. And then I could pick that up and start analyzing these trusted integrated uh, uh, data sets 
and then deliver analytics as a service into a catalog so that people can go, wow, that stuff's already out there. I can pick that up and go with it. And then I can either embed it, I could build a analytical applications using these components, I could visualize it, I could drive prescriptive analytics, and if I build new solutions, I could publish those, and then people just pick those up and go. And to me, in a way, if I look at the community of RapidMiner, what, a, what an opportunity that is for the community, is to go build components and let people leverage them to get a leg up on the acceleration stakes. So the idea that I can, I can go to these trusted data sources uh, and reuse them, because you still see the statistics about so much time being spent preparing data. And when I look around it today, almost everybody's integrating data. And a lot of the times when you say, well, why are you integrating data? And they say, well, we looked around, we couldn't find anywhere where this data is integrated. But a lot of the time, it's because they don't know where to look. There isn't any place that tells them what's available. There is no catalog what's available. So for me, a lot, of, a lot of my customers are saying, we want one of these. We want an iTunes inside the enterprise that's going to give me data as a service. Analytics as a service. We want the ability to then allow people to pick up these things that are already available, embed them in our new pipelines and go reuse them and accelerate the development process. <clears throat> And, but we also want to build real-time analytics, big data analytics, um, traditional uh, you know, analytics on top of data warehouses and whatnot. But as the data grows, we want the ability to deploy them closer to the data rather than bring the data to the analytics. And so I want the ability to build in a common place so everybody knows what's going on here. We know here's what's being built for real time, for big data, for traditional environments associated with risk or associated with operations or associated with customer. But here's where, they're de where we're deploying them in order to be reused and in order to get scalability. And of course, you know, uh, with, with, with RapidMiner announcing the ability to leverage things like Spark ML, Spark's machine learning library, um, it's allowing you to start exploiting you know, things like in Hadoop or in database kinds of analytics. And that's a good thing. Because the data is only going to get bigger. But at the same time, if you're really going to accelerate consumption and deliver an intelligent enterprise, you've got to make this on demand and you've got to make it event driven. Because we need both, no matter what you're trying to achieve, whether it's customer related improvements in engagement, whether it's you know, reducing risk, whether it's reducing unplanned operational cost, whatever it is. So we want the ability to either deploy into databases, into um, uh, platforms like Hadoop, and we want other tools to come in over the top and just say, give me it. Just give me it on demand. So they just invoke it. And, and then it's executed down where, where it makes sense to execute. Doesn't matter whether these people are using front-end BI tools like this or mobile BI or whatever. It doesn't matter. They, they just want to leverage it. But I also need to leverage it in order to keep track. Are we on track as a business to achieving our strategic goals? so that everybody's delivering on their objectives and their KPIs that roll up into hitting a strategic target so that we can plug into the, the, the scorecards of the world in order to um, make sure that we're all um, pulling on the same rope. And we've got to integrate it into our business processes. No matter where that is, whether you're working in a front office, whether you're working in a finance or HR kind of department or in your business operations or whether you're right out in the supply chain. We want the whole thing to be able to leverage analytics from end to end in order to make sure that if an order comes in up here, everything runs real smoothly all the way down the line in order to make sure um, that we're delivering the best service possible as a business for our customers which means that I've got to know 
where in our business processes we need analytics. Now, you can't go anywhere to answer that question unless you know what your processes are, which means we need people on the analytics team that know how we operate. We need to know what exactly happens in the business from order to cash or procure to pay or plan to manufacture or claims or whatever it is. We, we want that expertise and we want to know are these tasks performed by individuals? Are they performed by, uh, by, by applications? Or, if, or, you know, or is it a combination of both? Is it the case that this person is using this application up here? Or this application down here? And in some cases, like order entry, you take an airline, well, that's not just one application. I can buy a plane ticket on lots of indirect websites, in a contact center, in an airport. I can do it online, at the airline. So it might be a, a collection of applications that you need to integrate with, even for one task within a business process. So in a contact center, if somebody appears in my headset, I want it on demand. What's the propensity to buy of this customer in my headset? What's the projected value? What's the pr propensity to churn? You want to instantly inform these people so that they can just see it. And, and the script that they're reading changes dynamically to accommodate the profile of the customer that just got made on demand, in this case, probably by invoking four different analytics. But it's not just about on-demand analytics. There are plenty of operational frontline jobs that haven't even got time to analyze. They'd rather just be told what's the best action to take, guided, if you like. And that's where the whole recommendations come in. How can you recommend to, to allow people within these core business processes to keep the business running optimally, to avoid risk, so that there is no disruption to how you operate. There is no unplanned operational cost that came about because people didn't see an event going on in a the business. Therefore, they, didn't, they weren't able to um, take action before it became an issue across the organization. And the obvious example there is recommendations in the front office. We've all seen Amazon. But of course, with Omnichannel now, I want that recommendation not just on my website. I want the same recommendation if I call into a contact center, if I talk to somebody face-to-face, -face, if I talk to a partner even. I want the same recommendation everywhere, consistently, no matter where the customer goes. And we have to therefore constantly know what are the new events coming in about customer behavior. That might change that recommendation on the fly. Which then says to me, well, if I really want to get an omni-channel going on up here, I better be plugging in analytics right into it. Common services. Analytics is a service that I can get, whether they're prescriptive or just on-demand analytics. Predictive analytics or prescriptive analytics plug right in in order to drive consistent effectiveness across, across the business in a front office, keep the customer happy, but in this case, leveraging far more than just um, transactional activity data that's in our OLTP systems, but leveraging everything we can get our hands on about improving our customer insight because of the fact that we now know customers are all powerful that they will switch if there's a better deal out there um, in order to uh, uh, improve things for their business or, or, or for them as individuals. And if we're going to retain them, the more we, we can get our hands on in terms of real customer insight, um, the more likely we're going to give them personalized offers, uh, the more likely we're going to give them excellent service, and, uh, uh, and keep the customers happy, keep them coming back. 
But it's not just about on demand. I need event driven too. You can't see everything, no matter how many business analysts you're going to employ. Because the number of events coming into our enterprise now is staggering. We, we need to keep our finger on the pulse. More and more data is becoming real time. And we need to see some correlation across events, no matter where that's happening. And, and so we have to have automated eyes on our business. So looking at a combination of events going on across our business, enable, in order to perhaps within a time window, in a time series, see a business condition that requires an action, whether that action's alerting somebody for them to make a decision or whether it's purely automated. It could be fraud, could be, could be whatever it is. But for me, the trend here is, is clear, is we're not going to build just one, or, one of these kinds of things within our organization. We're going to build, uh, if you like, pipelines where there's lots of those around on the lookout for specific business conditions, whether it's finance-related, such as your, you know, if you carry on spending like this, you're going to blow your budget three months early, <coughs> uh, or whether it's operations-related, like somebody just uh, changed an order and that has a massive impact on your manufacturing process um, and resources that you need or, or you know but there's going to be a series of these agents looking out for different things across your enterprise and if there's anything that they see they may emit other events and, and, and there are other agents looking out for that and occasionally you resolve this at the ground level but occasionally these things might escalate all the way up to the strategic level because it warrants a strategic response from in the organization. But it's not just on the lookout for these things and tell me about it. It's actually tell me about it and in many cases tell me what to do about it. Make, give me some recommendations. There's prescriptive analytics at work within your operations in order to help people remain effective, stay on the right track, not choose the wrong decision, and, and, and wander off and cause um, more problems within the enterprise because it's not an effective action. And there we need <coughs> automation. We need the ability to automatically analyze and we need the ability to make automatic decisions. It's a combination of analytics and rules together that's going to drive that forward. So, I'll you know, leave you in a way with, with kind of, this is quite a technical chart, but it's an architecture in a sense, that, that the point is that if we're going to deliver intelligent enterprise, it's a case that we're going to take analytics and put them in the middle of the enterprise, we're going to wire them to everything. So that we're plugged in across the board so that we can engage people at strategic, tactical, and operational levels to, to improve customer effectiveness or people at strategic, tactical, and operational levels <coughs> to reduce risk, or to improve our op operations, or whatever it happens to be. So in summary then, I think one of the key things that we can do is organize ourselves for success. It's not just about great technologies, it's about organizing ourselves so that we can align with um, uh, business strategy so that we can get analytics producers and analytics consumers so that we can create um, who owns analytical contribution to strategic objectives from a business perspective and create these production lines so that we can accelerate development and we can coordinate consumption so that we know that these real-time analytics, these big data analytics these traditional analytics together contribute to reducing risk or together contribute to improving customer uh, engagement so that we can uh, roll them out as a program and get this continuous improvement going forward. I think we need a catalog to publish trusted data, to publish analytics, to make it easy for people to find, consume, and get going with that so that they can reuse it. And we need to make it easy to integrate integrate with applications, with third-party tools, and visualizations, and websites, and whatnot, 
<clears throat> and to be able to kind of you know, integrate prescriptive uh, uh, analytics in, in, into our operations and not just, not just predictive. So uh, what we're saying is we're, we're not in the world of business intelligence anymore. We need to move to the world of intelligent business, not just business intelligence. So with that, I'll uh, say thank you very much. And um, if any of you are in Brussels or Stockholm or London in the coming months, I'll uh, love to see you at one of the sessions I'm doing on education there. But, but again, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.